everyone and welcome to this first introductory tutorial about the desktop clients feature of ShapeDiver. Uh, so today I'll just go over the entire process of setting up uh, your ShapeDiver model and, um, and everything you need to be able to communicate between a desktop client, uh, in this case we'll use the example of Adobe Illustrator and a ShapeDiver model uh, uploaded online. Um, so we'll start with looking at a simple definition that I uh, created, which uh, takes a bunch of curves uh, as inputs and a light source and casts shadows uh, around uh, the curves in my document. So I think it's a good example uh, to introduce the Adobe Illustrator client because the algorithm in Grasshopper uh, extrudes all the curves and then use the, ca the cast shadow um, component, the yeah, mesh shadow of a grasshopper. So it goes in 3D and then comes back in 2D uh, with extra elements. Uh, so we have as inputs the, the size of the shadow, how, how far it casts, um, the set of curves and the light source point. As output, I have the set of curves which represents the, the shadows that I cast on my elements. So the first thing we want to do in Grasshopper is to, um, on top of traditional parameters, just like this slider, to be able to define uh, geometrical elements as inputs and outputs so that they become inputs and outputs that can uh, be sent and retrieved from external desktop clients like Illustrator. In my case, I have two uh, inputs that I want to tag as, uh, as uh, inputs from the shader model and uh, one output set of curves. Um, that's the result of my algorithm. Uh, in order to tag inputs, you simply need to uh, add the SD prefix before the name of the inputs. And that will take shape that tell ShapeDiver that these should be inputs that can be uh, controlled uh, in the ShapeDiver model. On the other hand, in order to define outputs, what you need is the ShapeDiver output component, which uh, then will um, not only allow you to display the curves in the online viewer, but also to bake the data in all the desktop clients that are compatible with curves. So once uh, my definition is ready here, I will save it and upload it to the platform. And once that's done, I can uh, follow the normal process. So I'll get to the edit page of the model. I'll be able to um, edit some settings. For example, I can set a top view in this case because I'm in 2D, remove the grid and ground plane. <clears throat> and I can even use in black as a different color. So I'll save the model like this. And then we can look at uh, what's different in this model if you're familiar with traditional uh, shader models. So here I can see my slider, uh, which is one of the traditional uh, parameters you can play with. But I can see also that the curves that I uh, used as input, I mean, the, the geometry I used is here uh, in the parameters uh, tab. It's currently not uh, active because I'm not connected to a desktop client. On the other side, on the side of outputs, the, the shadow curves that I defined as output are also here. They're used to display in the viewer here, but also can be baked in the desktop client. I can also see that I have my tab and this is where I'll pick my client once it's uh, enabled uh, locally. So how do I enable a client locally? Well, that's when uh, we have uh, a new um, ShapeDiver client application, which you can download from the uh, documentation. And here there's a lot of documentation in this desktop clients section about how to do everything I'm explaining currently. Uh, I'll get it for Windows. It's also compatible with Mac. And uh, I will install it. And this is just a small client that I can use um, then to um, make the connection between my ShapeDiver models online in the platform, in the browser, and uh, 
software that I've installed locally uh, on my computer. So I will now install the client. Which is quite light. Uh, too, too fast. All right. And now the client is uh, installed. You can find it and you can launch it. Launching it does not have any effect except um, the first time you launch it, uh, you will get this. Uh, prompt from the shader platform, it will automatically pop up a, a browser page that allow, uh, that asks you to authorize the shader standard clients uh, to access your shader account. Uh, if you're not logged in, the, the browser will prompt you to log in your account first and then will let you um, uh, follow this step. Once it's, it's done, you can close the, the tab again and you will find uh, the client here. You can still log in and log out. So what I just did uh, here, I logged in uh, from the client application, but I can log out again. And you'll see a series of uh, options, uh, mainly this list of clients that you can uh, enable the connection with. Uh, in the case of Illustrator, you have to start Illustrator first before you can establish a connection. So I will do that now. And once Illustrator is started, um, I will also directly open a document in Illustrator uh, because I need an active document to uh, communicate with uh, the software. This uh, will prompt uh, a warning if you did not uh, open an active document yet in Illustrator. So I will have Illustrator, uh, I prefer on the left, and my shader model on the right. And now that I have Illustrator open with a document open, I can here click on enable. I did not get the warning. Everything is good. The client is enabled and I should be able to find it in the list here so that I can now activate the client to um, send and receive data from my uh, local desktop client. I can see here that the client is active in several locations, so everything should be ready. I can see now that I also, also my inputs and my outputs are now available. Uh, the, the controls are active. So what can I do? Well, I can uh, then uh, work in, uh, in my document in Illustrator, and I can also, for example, create this sort of configuration with a bunch of curves and a light source. And since Illustrator does not have points inputs, I can I can just draw a small light source like this, a, a small curve. And uh, the 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 client will automatically convert this to a point because in my grasper model uh, I uh, define a point input. So now I can uh, select my uh, the curves I want to project shadows on with my algorithm and set them as input here. Once it's done, I will see the, the button becomes blue and I see how many curves are selected. I should already be able to see them in the viewer here. And I can select my light source here, same thing. Once it's done, the viewer uploads. I can see my light source. I can already see that here, my for this type of size size of curves, my my projection is a bit small, so I can change the size parameter to get a bit bigger um, bigger shadows. That should do. And on the other hand, I can now uh, see I have fifty eight uh, curves uh, that can be baked, and I can bake them back to my document. And I see that they came here um, uh, as part of my Adobe document. Um, so that's it pretty much for the uh, first introduction to the desktop clients. Uh, so you've seen everything from how to set up a model, um, how to install the client application in order to enable the connection between online models and uh, your uh, local software, and how to send data from the local software 
and to bake data back inside. Uh, we will have uh, other videos that go more in detail about uh, the data types that are compatible, what can be done, what cannot be done, and also how to use attributes to bake with um, a bit more uh, properties. For example, here I did not mention it, but I uh, used the attribute system inside Grasshopper to define that uh, my cur the curves I baked have no stroke and a black field. But I can also define a lot of things like layers, uh, names, and etc. opacity uh, in Illustrator. So that's it for the first introduction video. Thank you. And I hope you enjoy the new feature.